Good morning. Welcome to St. Lawrence O'Toole Church for the celebration of All Saints Day. My name is Peg Smith. I will be your lector for this Mass. Our celebrant is Father Tom. The second collection today will be for capital projects. Our Mass today is being offered for Robert Farrell. Please see the bulletin for announcements. Please turn off all cell phones and electronic equipment before the Mass begins. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. Today's very special solemnity uh, for us, the celebration of all saints, and a reminder, very pertinent reminder, that we are all invited, we are all called to holiness. As we come into our Lord's presence, as always, we are aware of the ways we have failed in that calling. We acknowledge that, and in so doing, prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Seated at the right hand of the Father, 
have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus God, with the Holy Spirit in the Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And it's time for Kids Chapel. Calling all, all stars, all future saints. Mom and Dad are saying, well, they got a long way to go, but all future saints, come on down. Yay. All right, with very cool masks and our helpers, and our helpers. Okay, all right. Guys, eyes up here. Hello, good morning. You're going to make the sign of the cross when I give you the blessing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, see you later. Okay, guys, go for it. See you later. One more. Come on, sweetie. Come on. <laughs> you go, too. All right. Go have some fun. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw an angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of great magnitude, which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne of the Lamb wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels around stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne worshiped God and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, my Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, these are the ones who survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter to St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. I kind of have a lot to say this morning. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to come out. <laughs> so there's just, uh, obviously there's a lot going on um, in our lives and an election coming up, very significant election, probably unlike one we've had in many, many years. But I don't want to dwell on that. I'll come back to that at the end. What I want to dwell on, first of all, is, um, first of all, some of the people that we're celebrating today, all saints. When you were confirmed, if you remember, you took the name of a saint, right? And you probably took the name of that saint because it was your favorite saint or it was somehow you felt a connection to this person. Today's a day we should feel a connection to all the saints. Uh, now, 
the church officially recognizes the holiness of some of our brothers and sisters and um, recognizes that in a particular ceremony um, and there's a, some degrees of that there are those who are blessed and then those who are canonized saints but everyone in heaven is a saint that's that's why they're there right that's why we're there god willing all of us one day if we're in heaven it's because we will in fact be saints whether we're actually recognized by such as the church or not um yesterday in connecticut uh and if i'm not mistaken this is connecticut's first uh blessed uh the, the we had the beatification of father michael mcgivney uh, who founded the Knights of Columbus, uh, Father McGivney. And this happened in, uh, the, the ceremony took place in New Haven. And if I'm not mistaken, that's Connecticut's first saint. And if, if there's another miracle, that what we, how, do you, how, do you, how does one go from blessed to saint? Well, it's because there's, there's not just one miracle attributed to this person, but two miracles. So if there's another miracle, uh, God willing, he'll be Saint Michael McGivney someday. Um, of course, New Yorkers congratulate um, our brothers and sisters in Connecticut, but we also know that we have more saints than Connecticut does. So we have quick to point that out, um, right? St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, um, Mother, Mother Seton, um, founders of Catholic schools, St. Mary Ann Cope, uh, who with Father Damien of, of Molokai was uh, ministered to the lepers in in the colonies there in the Hawaiian Islands. Um, St. Kateri Tekawitha, homegrown, right? Our, the, the, the lily of the Mohawks. St. Isaac Jogues, right? One of, one of the French Jesuit martyrs upstate. If you've never been to Arisville, to the shrine of uh, the Jesuit martyrs, you gotta go sometime. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful experience. Uh, St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, Mother, Fra Mother Francis Xavier, minister to the Italian immigrants uh, in New York. Uh, St. John Neumann, who eventually became a bishop of Philadelphia, but spent much of his time as a priest up in up, upstate, rural New York, and then west um, into Allentown, Pennsylvania, and, and eventually became bishop of Philadelphia. Um, so remember all of, all of these saints, but I also wanted to introduce you to one of the newest, uh, Blessed Michael McGivney is one of, very new, um, but just a couple weeks before that, and this should get your attention. Uh, how many of you have heard of Blessed Carlo Acutis? Okay, a few of you have heard, good. Um, this is just a cool story. So, <laughs> uh, Carlo is Italian, very Italian, um, he died when he was 15. He had leukemia. Um, so at the age of 15, um, he was born in 1991 in London. His parents later moved to Milan. As a teenager, he was diagnosed with leukemia. He offered his sufferings uh, for Pope Benedict in particular uh, and for the church, saying, I offer all the suffering. I will have to suffer for the Lord, for the Pope, and for the church. Um, from, from very young age, he showed a special devotion to the Eucharist, um, and he uh, loved praying the rosary, and he had this special devotion, though, for the Eucharist. But what, what stra stands out about Carlo is that in so many ways, he was so doggone normal, okay? Normal by the standards of any 15-year-old um, so when he, was, when he was 9 or 10, he got his first uh, PlayStation console. So here you have a young saint who, had his, who used a PlayStation. Okay. Um, we don't know exactly what his favorite computer games were, but he, was, he also loved, he was, he loved programming. And he actually designed his own website to promote Eucharistic adoration and knowledge of the Eucharistic miracles. Um, but he loved programming. 
and he loved playing computer games. But he held himself to just playing one hour a week, one hour a week as a sacrifice, as a penance. He offered that up. His parents were not, not particularly religious, you know. His mom even said uh, before her conversion, you know, she went to mass, you know, like, frankly, like a lot of nominal Catholics, you know, for, she was baptized, she did her first communion, she did her confirmation, and she went to church when she got married, you know, that kind of thing. Um, because of her son, her son who dragged her and other family members to Mass every day, not just once a week, daily Mass, okay, she had a huge conversion, enormous conversion, because of her son. And so when he was beatified in Assisi, because he loved Assisi, uh, when he was beatified there, uh, he, his, his body was, was on display for much of the month of October, um, like happens with some of the saints who are exposed, they had a, like a special mask made of his face, like modeled his face, wax mask, Be beautiful, beautiful. But here's this newest, newest blessed in the church, wearing jeans and Nikes <laughs> in, in this, this uh, in, as they displayed his body for veneration and people were coming to CC to venerate. Um, a very, in so many ways, normal young man, teenager, and at the same time, extraordinary. That's how God does it. Every saint, in so many ways, was ordinary, just like us. Oh, by the way, every saint also went to confession. I don't know, sometimes we think, well, oh, well, the saints, well, they never had to go to confession. This guy, Carlo, went to confession every week. Weekly confession. Sinners made saints. Sinners made holy. We don't start out holy. We become holy. That's what God does for us. Now, all of these, you know, most saints, I think, also, you could point out, uh, loved their country. There's nothing contrary about love of one's country, patriotism, and being a saint. Carlo had his favorite soccer team, very Italian, I'm sure he loved, loved Italy. Right? Father McGivney, New Haven, Connecticut, I'm sure he loved his country. Right? Uh, and look what he gave us, the Knights of Columbus. I mean, that's like about as American as, you know, apple pie and Chevrolet. You know, what do you do if you're a Catholic? Well, you, you know, a lot of Catholic guys, you join the Knights of Columbus, or the Columbiates, right? Uh, the, the female branch. So, nothing contrary about loving one's country deeply, and you can look at any of, any of our American saints, love this country, right? One of the first signers of the Declaration of Independence, Catholic, right? Catholics have loved their country for a long time. We find ourselves right now in a moment where, uh, if you're like me, I think we, we suffer because we see our country being torn in so many ways, and I think a proper attitude, a proper response of a Catholic right now is to love our country and to pray for our country. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. At the same time, as much as we love our country, like the saints, and this is where I'm going, we need to remember our situation. Every saint, as much as they patriotically loved their country and exercised their citizenship and participated in, in, in the political system, and, and right, nonetheless, deep down, the thing that makes a saint a saint is that he or she knows that we're just pilgrims, that we're just pilgrims 
that we're just passing through. I want to share with you the beautiful words of what we call the preface to the Eucharistic prayer that I'll use today as we, when, we, when we get to the Eucharistic prayer. But it's so beautiful on this Feast of All Saints. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Listen to this. And I hope when I pray this on our behalf as, as your celebrant, we'll all make this our prayer to and, and embrace these words. Towards her, the heavenly Jerusalem, towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and example towards her. Where are we going? What's our situation? We love our country. We're Catholics. But we also know who we are deep down and we know where we're going. We know where we're supposed to be headed. Our hearts need to be in the heavenly Jerusalem. And we have to understand that we are all called to holiness, every single one of us. And on Wednesday, November 4th, whoever we wake up to and find out is the President of the United States, or whoever's sworn in in January, our situation is still going to be the same. We are called to holiness. We are still pilgrims. We are still just passing through. Our true home is the New Jerusalem. Our true home is in heaven. And I would pray, I would pray that all of us, as concerned as we might be, uncertain as we might be about what's going to you know, happen in the next week or two, um, where things go, if we can ask our Lord during this Mass to fill our hearts with the longing for heaven. Right? That's, that's one of the things, that's one of the um, ways that the Holy Spirit can uh, get our hearts burning right? with that desire. This is what can move us to holiness. This is what can move us to believe that all of us, every single one of us, the universal call to holiness, it's all of us. And our role and what we need to do and what we can do for the country that we love is seek holiness. Not a holier-than-thou holiness, a real holiness the holiness of the Beatitudes. And if we want to know the road map, the way Jesus gave it to us, Matthew chapter 5, blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure of heart. Right? How much does our country need that? Just that, just that one Beatitude purity of heart, right? This is what we're called to give. This is what we can continue to give the day before the election, the day after the election, and the week after that, and the week after that. Let's thank God for our call. Let's remember who we are, our deepest identity, and let's trust and believe that that miracle can happen in our lives. I know I'm talking to people who are already working on it. We're working on it. We're trying to correspond to God's grace. Let's trust in the holiness that he wants to give us and that he can give us with our collaboration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's stand together now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world. Brothers and sisters, we renew our trust in our good and merciful God, and we ask him to hear our prayers. We pray for our country as we approach our elections, that we may be blessed with leaders who listen to the Holy Spirit and who acknowledge that God is the source of all true authority. We pray to the Lord. That all Catholics will vote with a properly formed Catholic conscience ready to defend innocent human life and religious liberty. We pray to the Lord. That all the members of our families who are away from the faith return to the Lord and return to the love of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. For those who have lost heart and struggle with discouragement and hopelessness, that they may find in the gospel new hope and among us brothers and sisters to walk with them, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died and especially for Robert Farrell, for whom this Mass is offered, that God may give them the gift of eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you invite us to trust in you always. Help us to remember that you are with us all days, even to the end of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters always gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Lawrence, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world and to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life with kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ who said to your Apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I'm not worthy. I should enter in my room. I'm going to say the word.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. And tomorrow is the Feast of All Souls, so All Souls Day. And what uh, Father Gill did, we were going to have the Mass in the, at uh, St. Lawrence Cemetery, but because it's going to be really cold and windy tomorrow, um, that Mass has been moved back here to the church at 3.30. Um, and I'll actually be here. I'll be celebrating that Mass at 3.30 here in the church. And then I'm hearing confessions after that. So if you want to um, uh, come to confession tomorrow, 4 to 7, uh, I'll be doing that. And 3.30 Mass here. There will still be blessing of the graves at the cemetery at 4 o'clock. So if you still wanted to go for that, Father's going to do that. Um, good. Next Saturday, remember we, the Jesus Retreat. You can look up information on that. Um, in the, I'm sure there's in the, in the bulletin and on the website. Starting this week too, Wednesday, November 4th, um, we'll just start that Wednesday evening Mass for those who would like to come during the week, 7 p.m. Mass, but no longer on Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, but there will also be an extra hour of confessions before Mass on Wednesday. Remember, you're invited also, uh, if you don't have other plans for Thanksgiving, if you'd like to assist St. Anthony of Padua Parish in the Bronx, it's a sister parish of ours, to volunteer. Uh, they have three homeless shelters that they minister to to uh, help distribute uh, Thanksgiving, uh, uh, Thanksgiving meal, dinner, uh, to members of those shelters. Uh, you can sign up or donate also, or volunteer at stlawrenceotool.org. Uh, slash Thanksgiving. And then finally, you can get your silent bazaar raffle tickets um, at the welcome desk after Mass. Uh, that drawing is on Thanksgiving Day. Okay. Let's ask our Lord's special protection on our country and on our church as we pray. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And I think there's coffee and donuts, too. So. <laughs> Make it a beautiful day and a beautiful week, everybody. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.